Hey there viewers and welcome back to our channel. Here you have our deck lid, trunk lid, depending on whatever you want to call it, that has been removed from the car. Um, I've kind of gone through it, taken a look at it. I have washed it and all of that stuff. I haven't done any wax and grease cleaner or anything like that um, of the sort on it, but I have identified the um, highs and the lows and the creases just to kind of give me a little bit of an idea um, what's going on here. So these are kind of lumpy and wavy uh, when they come from from the factory. I, they just they just kind of are. Uh, so we want to get this thing blocked out uh, super nice. So there's going to be a lot of hand blocking on it. Kind of like the hood. Uh, I don't think with the hood that I showed a lot of the blocking. I know I showed a lot of the power sanding. So I thought I would probably cover some of the things that maybe I missed on camera. Um, when we did the hood, which is still sitting here in primer, but whatever. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Step one, I'm gonna tap down gently the highs. I'm gonna use the reflectivity, if that's a word, of the existing paint coating um, to kind of help tell me how far and where to tap down the highs. So that's what I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna use kind of a blunt faced hammer for that. I know you probably can't see that real well, but um, I'm looking at a high about right here. So we'll just kind of massage that down and we'll look at it in the light. If anything, I would prefer a small dent. So we're gonna grind most of this paint coating off and that will bring our metal nice and flat. Okay, here's another one. It's a little bit hard to see. Got another one right here. dent now which I'm quite okay with this whoops you really can't see that I'm sorry it's kind of a combination high and low this is a low we're gonna leave it um, over here we're, uh, we're gonna block it because it's kind of got some sort of a Odd little wave. I've got a crease over here. Uh, that's a low. And then a, a kind of a wave in the panel going on over here. So the polyurethane underneath this guy is in pretty good shape. I think I'm going to start uh, sanding this thing first. What we got now, um, got virtually all the shiny paint. I say I got one spot here. Shiny paint's gone. Uh, if there was a low, I dug it down to the metal so that I know to put filler in there. If there was a wave, same thing. Uh, that one little high looks good. So at this point, I'm going to put a tight coat of body filler, but I'm going to make absolutely sure that I don't put any of that on uh, glossy paint. So our Bondo's had a few minutes to set up. I'm just gonna buzz the highs off it and then I'll hand block.
All right, what you're looking at now, you can see this body filler feathered really nice. It was done. This had a couple of what I call scratch marks in it uh, where it didn't feather super nice. So that means we need another coat. Uh, thin and wide is kind of the idea here. I know it probably looks like this is a foot thick on the camera, but uh, it's actually really, really, really thin. Thin coats that block nice, spread easy. Um, my original area, we maybe went out four or five inches past um, here where we originally were. Um, we're using a nice long uh, semi-rigid block. This, uh, this Dura block here, you can see it's probably uh, a little over half the size of the panel uh, width, width wise and then the length uh, gives us a nice, uh, you know, a little bit of bend, just a little bit. So I'm holding the block kind of like, you know, such as I'm, as I'm blocking so that I'm not making any flat spots. We're just trying to be uh, as efficient as we can. Uh, when I prime it, I like to see it, you know, pretty dang flat. I'm not stripping this down to the metal because it doesn't have an adhesion problem. Everything's on it getting tight. Um, there's really, I don't see the, the point behind doing that. The original finish was just, I didn't like the color and it was kind of ugly. It was scratched up. Um, all of that's getting taken care of just doing the sand. And so we're going to give this a few more minutes. Uh, you can see my second coat of Bondo went on a lot smoother than my first. And that's exactly what you want to see. Um, hoods and deck lids are like super important uh, that your body work is, is, is super straight, especially we're doing a, a fairly dark color, you probably noticed. Um, we want to make sure that this looks nice. So I'm going to let that cure out for about 10 minutes and we'll be back. Okay, so we got this hood about halfway done, and uh, it is taking a fair amount of filler to get rid of the waves and such. They're not real deep, they're just wide, and we don't want those. So, mix me up another batch. Kind of got to do the hood in sections. Uh, if you do want to do an entire panel, there is a product available called Rage Ultra Extra, and um, I think it gives you like 45 minutes to spread your uh, filler out over the panel. So all I'm interested in doing here is just filling little waves and things that maybe I haven't seen and bury it all under epoxy. So we're doing a tight coat and then we're kind of going to tool our body filler a little bit here. So try to get this out to the end. Um, one advantage of doing it this way is my primer is probably about 240, 250 a gallon. Um, and then this body filler is probably about 50 or $60 ish thereabouts for a gallon of it. So it's definitely a little bit of cost savings. Um, it's harder to block out than the primer. The primer really does a nice job uh, for finish coats. So I'm gonna try to see if we can't maybe save a little bit of primer. We used a lot of primer on the hood. Uh, maybe we can be a little more efficient with our money and use more body filler as the primer's job. Not that we're leaving more Bondo on the panel, but we're just gonna use it to get the panel just absolutely ultra straight. So, let's see, we got some trash there. If you put this on too thick, mind you, we are hand blocking. And uh, it's 
really going to wear your arms out. So Bondo's starting to kick over. I think I'm going to have to leave it with where we are. We didn't waste too terribly much. But uh, we'll always go back for a second pass. All right, folks. So here you can see we got a little sloppy up there, but uh, we've covered the whole panel uh, in body filler. I just think it's going to be less work um, for this. I mean, it's even wavy in the front, so I'm not exactly sure uh, why that is, but um, that's fine. We're going to fix it. So everything's covered um, fairly good. Uh, we're going to let this sit about 10 minutes, maybe even a little bit longer, and then we're going to just DA sand with 80 grit on a medium interface pad um, made by Meguiar's and that's going to get these big hard lines out and then uh, we'll hand block the entire panel. Um, one reason I didn't elect to cover the hood completely in body filler, I mean I kind of ended up doing it anyway, but uh, this has no details that we risk losing, no you know, body waves uh, that you want to keep, uh, details, features if you will. So um, it's pretty much just one great big flat um, kind of domed shaped piece of metal so uh, nothing real extravagant as far as that's concerned uh, the back side of it is going to be more than likely satin epoxy black uh, just like the hood because uh, i don't really see the need to paint the underside of the trunk lid uh, with the expensive paint so that's how we're going to elect to save money because remember the customer's always right <laughs> So has the dust does its settling thing. You can kind of see what we have here. Um, I dropped down to 40 uh, just to kind of save my time a little bit. Um, and then I DA'd it back up to 80 uh, just to refine the scratches because uh, those are pretty deep scratches. But um, so far it, it actually feels really good. Um, you can kind of see at this point uh, when you really get a good look at the panel, uh, why I elected on this one, because it was just getting silly uh, to cover the whole thing in body filler. And you can see kind of the um, waves and stuff that I was talking about. So uh, yeah, anyway, uh, those are pretty much gone. We're getting really close to, um, to being able to do our primer. Uh, if you look down here, at the front of the panel, you can, it's from the factory. It's not a damage that somebody did. That's just kind of how they made these cars. Um, quality isn't really, uh, and the sheet metal wasn't, wasn't quite the nicest. Um, anyway, so I've applied a little bit more body filler in our places where we had some, you know, scrapes and things like that where you could tell that it needed some. So that's gonna get set up. I'm probably gonna just hand block that stuff uh, with 80 um, on a medium sized block. No real point in using that super big one anymore. Uh, it's pretty much fulfilled its usefulness at this point. Uh, you'll probably see it again uh, when it gets into primer. Um, put some good build primer on this and then we'll get that blocked out uh, more than likely with 150 um, on that primer. I will get this body filler um, blocked as well before, again, before I, uh, before I head into the booth with it, because I don't like uh, priming over 80 grit scratches, especially uh, in body filler and especially on a panel 
like this that really everybody's going to see. Some of the smaller trim pieces, uh, things that are a little more out of sight, uh, you can get away with there being a sand scratch or two in that, but um, I don't want to chance that on this. So we're going to let this set up again, and then we'll block this out with 80. We'll get everything looking good. Uh, we'll give it the wax and grease remover treatment. Um, I'd like to be done with the top here. Probably looking at the clock. Let's see in the next uh, half hour, I would like to be finished um, with the top. And then we'll simply switch over and, and get the front done here. So probably just give you a little snippets as that happens. Considering the top done, I uh, did run 150 on an interface pad with a DA sander or a palm sander, whatever you want to call it, over the top, and then I washed the panel uh, just, just with water to kind of see what's going on with it. It felt pretty good, but uh, I don't see any lumps, bumps, waves, anything like that in it. So it's definitely at the point, um, you know, where we can get some. Uh, primer on it. So I do want to get this finished up. This is super wavy. Um, it's kind of hard to see in the camera, but uh, it's you can just tell that that's kind of how they put it together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this, uh, most of this paint. I'm going to hit it with 80. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about what's going on down here because the body line is good. It's just got a couple little minor dents and wowies, which um, honestly I'm wondering if it probably came that way from the factory. So. Um, we're going to get this done. Probably not going to record that part. I'm running a little bit behind on time. Um, this is the same as that. It's going to get covered in body filler. We are just going to make sure that we don't fill our rivet holes for the keyhole uh, or anything like that. We want to keep our body filler away from this little area. One, because it's all hidden. And two, we don't want to interfere with the operation of the lock. All right, viewers, this thing's ready to go in the booth. Uh, front, actually did okay. Near as I can tell, again, I'm running out of time. So I'm going to get some epoxy on this. Um, got epoxy on the table over there mixed up, inducing. Uh, it would like a half hour. Um, I'm going to put this thing in the booth uh, after I wipe it down with wax and grease cleaner. Let it bake. Let all the solvents and crap get out of it. Sweep up this mess and then we'll prime. All right, folks. Well, I did not get a chance to record the priming process, if you will, but you'll have to take my word for it that we put primer on this panel. So everything looks good. A couple little sand and scratches, a few more than I'd like, but uh, I'll just let our uh, polyurethane primer surfacer, you know, I'm gonna let it sit for probably a week or so before I put any top coats or anything on it. So shouldn't have any issues with shrinkage. I got three nice coats of epoxy, got the heat turned on in the shop. It's getting a little warm in here, so it should be about 80, 85 degrees uh, here over the night. And let this guy cure out. Tomorrow we'll do a little hand block 150, and then uh, fill everything's good on that. Maybe a little spot filler here and there. I see about two or three little spots where there's some scrapes, if you will, in the Bondo. So nothing out of the ordinary. Um, then we'll get to our polyurethane on it and be done with it. So we'll see you tomorrow. 
Okay, so what do I mean by blocking? Um, it's probably a term I have not explained previously. So we're gonna use a semi-rigid, and you can see it's definitely not a rigid. There's a place and a time for a rigid. Uh, I don't believe this panel is. So this is a sanding block, obviously, and this is our paper. You can buy this paper pre-made, pre-cut uh, for file boards and things like that. So we always wanna use the biggest block that's um, feasible for what we're doing. If I'm just doing a little area, you know, let's say maybe here, a block this size is, is probably redundant. Um, in fact, it's probably not the best block. But what it's gonna do is when we're sanding the panel, it's gonna even out all the highs and lows in an area this big. So you sand it in multiple directions, in multiple different ways, and you block out the panel. So uh, it's easy to think about. Um, when you're doing the block out process, there's a boat in the water. So a little boat is, is really going to get moved around by the waves. Um, a big boat, the waves aren't really going to do a whole lot to it. It's just going to cut right through the water and uh, it'll do a lot better job. So blocking a panel out, uh, I know I've done it with a little block like this before. It just depends on what you're doing. So, um, you know, use the block at hand. Uh, that, that works best for the job. So, um, you can make your own sanding blocks. I happen to really like these uh, Durablock kits. I think they're about $50 from most all of the retailers. So um, anyway, that hopefully clears up a few questions that I'm sure folks have had about blocking. Um, 150 is a great uh, use on paint, use on primer. Uh, used before coating uh, type of, of paper. It cuts fairly quick, uh, lasts a decent amount of time. Uh, it doesn't leave excessively coarse scratches that future cook, wow, <laughs> we're a little short. Oh well, that, um, it won't leave scratches that uh, future coatings can't fill. Like the scratches you see in here are not 150 scratches. They're probably 80 and a couple of the 40 grit scratches. But um, I want to get these scratches all out so that um, our primer doesn't have to fill them a second time. So just makes for a better quality product. So as we're blocking out the panel, there's a couple of things I hope you're noticing. One, I hope you're noticing that we're not trying to dig the guide coat. We're not tipping, you know, the sanding block to try to get the guide coat out. This is actually a low area, and these spots here um, <clears throat> could be some bubbles, you know, pinholes in my body filler. Um, here's another low area that we're going to have to fill. So what I'm doing is I'm blocking with the contour of the panel. Okay, and what I mean by that is this is dome shaped. So this is higher out here than it is and it's got a little bit of a different taper to it. In other words, this is, this is um, you know, that big and then we gain an extra inch, inch and a half um, to the bow of the panel as we get into the middle of it. So what I'm doing as I'm blocking this out is I wanna keep the contour of the edge that's different than the contour up here. Why? Because that's how GM made this hood or made this trunk lid. So you don't want to block it completely flat. You want to block it with the contours of the panel. So you're noticing um, on this, I'm really sticking to the body line because the way this dome shape works, we always have to end at a body line. So if I get my body line good, okay. In other words, if I block my body line, and maybe even do that first, just see what works for you. Um, if I keep my sander on a good section, I know I'm blocking true, if you will, uh, for the rest of the panel. So that's just a way that I do it. Um, things like this, I'm not super concerned about. 
Um, I don't want to burn through the epoxy. We're going to let um, this, honestly, this little spot here is something that the primer uh, surfacer is going to fill. Uh, no body filler needed whatsoever. I'm really blocking this out, uh, one, for a little extra perfection, and two, is I want to nix out uh, these fairly heavy sand scratches and knock this epoxy down a little bit thinner so I don't have quite so much coating buildup um, on my panel because it's really not necessary. Pretty much done blocking, ready for a primer surfacer on this piece. Um, next question you're going to have, when do I stop blocking? So you got a couple options. Um, I usually stop blocking when the guide coat is gone out of the area. And don't sit and block in one spot for too long. You want to block as wide of an area as possible to you know, confuse your eyes and make sure that the panel is actually level. Um, your next option, more than likely, um, if you're not like a super professional at doing this, is you'll stop blocking when you cut through the primer. Um, now this epoxy starts to get light spots in it when you get really close to the metal, so that's, that's my hint to stop. Um, I don't want to sand through the epoxy because it's my corrosion protection on this panel. Um, if you do, you do. You can re-epoxy it, wait another day, um, or you can prime over it with a DTM primer or you can just prime over it. So there's a couple of different options depending on what you're doing. I ain't going to tell you which one's the best. So anyway, um, right here in the corner is a classic example of when to stop blocking. So you can see I've cut through the primer into the metal here. If I keep blocking this, all I'm going to do is sand the metal. You can see we've got a little bit of warpage going on on the edge. Uh, this area cannot be block sanded anymore. It needs to be filled because all of this is low. You have a low here, a low here, a high here, which is factory, and you have a low here, and you have a low on the body line. So this is definitely a spot that you need to stop blocking because it's just not possible. If I pan the camera over, you're going to see that in this area, you can see there's some guide coat here, but we've cut through on the body line here, so you can't block that any further. Um, that is a low and it needs to be filled with some sort of a product, primer, surfacer. If you look over, pardon me, by the keyhole, uh, we're going to put tape in this now um, so that we don't interfere with the fitment of the lock cylinder or anything, which you can see I have, uh, I'm starting to cut through the epoxy, so stop, and I'm starting to cut through the epoxy, which means this cannot be blocked out anymore. And what I saw before when I was sanding the paint is there was a major issue um, going on in this area and blocking the panel out has further reaffirmed that that issue is still there and that we're not making stuff up. So what we have to do, um, I'm going to try to cover this with primer. It's really not that low, but you'll notice none of this actually got sanded. So it brings us to another couple of things. I'm going to scotch bright this with a red and we're going to put extra coats of a uh, primer surfacer here or we're going to end up going with body filler uh, to fill this low area and just looking at it it's not a dent um, it's just how the panel was made our last area on knowing when to stop is uh, right here you can see we're starting to cut through the epoxy we're starting to cut through the epoxy we're starting to cut through the epoxy and we're starting to cut through the epoxy which means that this whole area um, I'll move the camera a little bit. This whole area is actually low, but it's it's not bad enough that you would want to put body filler on it because it's almost blocked, but not quite. So I didn't want to hit sheet metal. Um, really, this entire area, I'm probably just going to put an extra coat or two of primer surfacer in that area. These little pinholes are probably worth your time to skim with a little bit of body filler. Um, I may, if I have some out, uh, just gently cover, you know, really, 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 really tight coat uh, cover these type of little areas just makes my uh, primer go on that much better.
So hopefully that helps you out a little bit. I am gonna scotch bright red uh, the guide coat out of those little spots and problems that you see. So um, I'm not gonna show the primer surfacer. You've seen it in a dozen of my other videos. Not a whole lot new is actually gonna happen there. Uh, I will show you the block out phase two. Uh, there is this, this is phase three of, yeah, because we did body filler, epoxy. This will be the third time we blocked this panel out. So again, we're going for super laser straight. Um, I'm not sure how feasible doing it this way is in a collision type environment where you're really trying to get your repair to match the rest of the car. If you have one absolutely perfect panel and the rest of the car is kind of eh, then your repair is really going to stand out. So um, in this case we're redoing the whole car. So yeah, into the booth we go. All right, our panel is still a, about 118 degrees last I checked. So. I uh, just got done with a 30 minute bake cycle, so I'd like to get our uh, primer surfacer roughed in and then obviously I'll let it sit overnight, kind of let everything do its thing, so uh, all that good stuff. We're going to hit it with guide coat and then we're going to block it out. I'm probably going to start with 220 and then I'll DA sand with 320. I don't think there's going to be anything major uh, going on with this primer surfacer. It, it all looks really good in the booth. I've got just a couple little burn throughs on this panel, so I'm going to go ahead and prime it one more time. Um, it is down to the epoxy in most of those burn through places, but I found that if the primer is not perfectly gray under this blue, it doesn't hide and it shows up. So yeah, in the interest of not getting burned by that again, just things you learn. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this whole panel, no guide coat, just uh, 320. I've already blocked it out with 220. I'm gonna hit it 320 on the DA sander, pull it in the booth, prime it again. Everything blocked out uh, really well on it. I'm very happy. Um, definitely like the blue sandpaper a little better than the gold. It seemed to last longer. So anyway, um, next time you see this, it's gonna have another coat of primer on it. Probably let it sit for a half hour um, in the booth after spraying that primer. Not gonna film that and then uh, I will hand block that out probably with 320 by hand um, and then let it sit. And actually it's a super nice day out. So I'll probably leave that panel outside for the rest of the afternoon in the sun and maybe come back and put it in before, uh, you know, evening. So, you know, somebody doesn't steal it because this is desirable stuff, you know. Well, there you got it, folks. We're gonna let this guy dry out. I put three pretty well reduced coats on, two. Put two coats on it, uh, fairly well reduced. Um, don't really need to block a lot in this particular, you know, stage that it is. So I'll pretty much um, block it out with 320. And then uh, after that, 500, paint it blue. So with that being said i think we'll wrap this video up kind of like we did with the uh, hood video if you liked what we did here if you learned something hopefully you learned um, about blocking out a panel and how it makes it really straight and nice uh, go down below subscribe to our channel uh, leave us a comment give us a thumbs up and as always thanks for watching